Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another post ER night shift update. I worked uh, last night and the emergency room has been crazy. Not because so much COVID, I think I've shared this before. For certain, you know, springtime's not really classically a really busy time, but I think there's a lot of people that have put off their health care because of COVID. So the hospital is full of sick people. And at the same time, we're having a hard time staffing all the, the beds because we've had a lot of people just have been burned out in the last year. So it's been a, a bit of a frustration. Um, at one point last night, I had, you know, 30 something admitted patients in the ER and had 38 in the waiting room. And that's never a good situation, not safe. It doesn't make for happy patients or happy doctors or providers or nurses. Um, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Galvin. I'm board certified in emergency medicine um, as well as obesity medicine. I run a precision medicine clinic outside of Charlotte, but also work in the emergency department still. And I've been doing these COVID updates since, you know, way back when, when it's all started. Um, Numbers today, 1.5 billion immunizations worldwide. We're up to 9.1% of the world population uh, vaccinated. Here in the US, 122 million people are fully vaccinated. Um, another 156 million have gotten at least one dose, um, which is important. I think we're at 37.1% of the population uh, being vaccinated in some, in, uh, some degree now. So CDC all of a sudden lifted all the mask mandates for people who are immunized. Why is that? Because, you know, it's science-based. You know, I saw somebody that had a shirt that says, believe in science. Well, there's no belief in science. Science is provable, it's testable, it's reproducible. And so when you have good science, it's not about belief, it's about reality. And what do we know? That we've gotten a number of studies from both the U.S. and Israel that shows that the vaccines are highly effective um, in preventing severe disease, death in hospitalization, as well as long haul symptoms. And they also are, we're starting to see data that shows that significantly reduces the transmission, the viral load. And so should you develop COVID, if you're immunized, you're likely to be asymptomatic and you're unlikely to give it to anybody else. So that's great news. Um, and subsequently we've seen cases really drop. And if you're immunized, like I've said before, you really have nothing to worry about. Your your own personal risk is, is really limited. And you know, let's face it, we've tried to be good citizens, all of us for the last year and a half. We've done all these precautions to protect ourselves and others. Well, you know what? I'm immunized, I'm protected. Um, and everybody pretty much is eligible to get it now. If you decide not to get immunized and you get sick, that's kind of on you. I, I don't think that the rest of us you know, I think we, we've all been given equal choices. And, you know, unfortunately, I have a friend who, you know, doesn't believe in vaccination and didn't believe it for a family. And um, unfortunately, they've got a family member who's deathly ill with COVID right now um, that was eligible to get vaccinated months ago. And had they done that, they would be fine now. And now we're, we're looking at, you know, potentially a very grave outcome for that patient, praying that, that that won't happen. But again, there are real consequences to deciding not to get vaccinated. And, um, you know, I think the one thing we can say about the anti-vax people is that they've been very, very consistent since the beginning about being wrong about almost everything, unfortunately. I want to talk quickly about children. I've gotten a ton of questions about A, immunizations in kids and also masks in school. And so we know that Pfizer completed a study that showed very good efficacy and safety in children down to age 12. They've actually both Pfizer and Moderna are actually studying uh, kids down to the age of two. And I would imagine by the fall, um, likely we'll have enough data to, to decide whether it's safe to immunize, you know, the majority of children. Um, I think in terms of masks in school, you know, we know that children are much less likely to get severe disease. Now, that being said, about 300 kids have died of COVID um, in the U.S. and thousands have been admitted. It's in the top 10 this year of causes of death of children. So it's not a zero risk, but it's very, very low. I mean, 300 kids versus, you know, well, almost 600,000 adults, you know, so it's a huge disparity. Now, I think the concern is those kids giving it to other people who are susceptible. So if the teachers are immunized or taking precautions and the families are immunized, then the risk to the children is very, very low. Um, I think school districts have a difficult road to sort of uh, follow. Would I, if I had a 12 year old, would I let them get immunized? Absolutely, I'm, I'm very confident in the data, um, the safety. Remember these mRNA vaccines are only in your system for about 36 hours and then they're gone. 
there's very little chance that they can cause any kind of long-term problems. We've been immunizing people. The study started in, in last July with really no problems and 1.5 billion people worldwide. Um, so I'm pretty uh, confident in the data that shows that 12 and up are um, are it's safe and efficacious and they're just as effective as ch in children as they are in adults. Um, I think we'll look at the data as it comes out for younger kids. In terms of those kids who are still in school, I, I get it. You know, we want those kids out of their masks. We want those uh, restrictions out of play. We want them back into school full time. I think a big piece of that is those who are around them. If we can minimize the, the risky people around them, meaning surround those kids with immunized people and the chance of it spreading and causing problems are low. Your own children are, are at pretty low risk unless they've got underlying medical problems of getting COVID and having severe symptoms, but the, the chance is not zero. It does drop to zero with immunization, uh, practically speaking. I mean, uh, the studies all show that uh, essentially it almost brings those risks down to zero. Um, that's it for uh, today. We are going to be starting to, you know, talk a little bit more, I think, going forward about living our lives, not like trying to, to save our lives, not getting COVID, not getting sick. But, you know, for the last year and a half, we've kind of, you know, not lived. And I think it's time for those of us who um, are able to and are protected, it's time to start living. And so we're going to start uh, posting more interesting content. Uh, we've just uh, hired a couple new health coaches. We've got a couple exercise physiologists on staff now, and one of the, a couple of them are really passionate about cooking. So we're going to be doing some cooking videos and talking more about health and wellness and how to start living your life again uh, now that we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So as usual, please, if you like me, please follow us on uh, Facebook and on YouTube and elsewhere on Instagram, links below. Um, stay safe, wash your hands. If, you need, if you're not immunized, wear your mask because remember, your risk has not dropped at all if you're not immunized. Um, otherwise, you know, follow your local guidelines. You're safe, you're protected if you're immunized. Stay safe, look after your yourselves, your family, and those around you. God bless, talk to you soon.